Hello, friends, and not yet friends. Welcome back to Will It Tofu here on Mary's Test Kitchen, where it's high time I get to this most requested ingredient hemp hearts, aka shelled hemp seeds. Please give this video a thumbs up if you were waiting for this one. Plus, we'll try the same thing on roasted peanuts as a follow up to our raw peanut tofu experiment. If you're new to the series, we're applying the traditional tofu making method to non traditional ingredients specifically going for the high protein and low carb macro balance that is similar to the original as opposed to something high carb like this Burmese tofu I shared almost a decade ago. So far we've found fava beans are a total dupe, making fava bean tofu almost indistinguishable from soy tofu, while red lentils make something lighter and a bit more delicate. The verdict is still out on lupini beans. But pumpkin seed tofu is probably the best thing ever, plus it practically makes itself. Sunflower seeds and raw peanuts make something more like cream cheese. And we still have much more to discover. So many ingredients, only so much patience. Hence the two for this week. First up, the much hyped hemp hearts. Famously high in omega 3s, they are also known to be a good source of plant based protein. But they are not cheap, so please like and subscribe so I can keep making these videos for you. I'm pretty confident this isn't going to be an expensive waste of time since there is already hemp hard tofu on the market. Not anywhere I can personally buy it, of course, but I know it's out there. And since hemp hearts are fairly soft and easy to blend, I'll skip the usual soaking step and just measure out half a pound. And I'll blend with about double the weight of water. Just about 10 seconds for these small and relatively soft seeds in the Vitamix. Maybe you'll blend a little bit longer if your blender isn't as powerful. Then into my favorite nut milk bag. This is probably the creamiest plant-based milk we've made so far in this series. The pulp is a bit stickier than the others. The taste is actually really mild and nutty, not bitter at all. Sometimes hemp hearts can be overly grassy or bitter tasting, not sure why. Perhaps it's different from brand to brand. I got these from Bulk Barn if you're curious. Definitely saving that for something else. Back to the milk. I'm gonna skip the starch settling step because hemp hearts have hardly any starch to begin with. Instead, the milk goes straight into the pot and I bring the heat up to high. Immediately, I start stirring with a flat edged spatula just to make sure nothing gets burned to the bottom, which can happen easily with any kind of milk. We're just looking for the milk to simmer. A few of you have already tried this and told me the results were similar to our pumpkin seed tofu. That is, with self-coagulation. No need for any additional coagulating agent. And lo and behold, we have curds forming all by themselves. Fluffy white curds. I keep things moving and turn the heat down a bit so we keep the simmer but lessen the chance of things foaming over until no more curds seem to be forming. The whey is still quite milky looking, so I'm not sure if it's completely done yet. I'll cover it and wait 15 minutes just to be sure. A great time to tidy up a bit and check on the nearby cat. Yes, confirmed, still as cute as ever. And back to the pot. What's interesting is that the curd yield looks quite high compared to our pumpkin seed patches when adjusted for the starting weight. There's less whey in here. Same oops. But will these fluffy white curds make a nice solid tofu block the same way as our previous green pumpkin seed curds? Let's set up my favorite tofu press and find out. Curds in. Slightly sweet, it's nutty, tastes good. Fold the cloth over, add the pressing lid, twist the knob for more pressure, and pour off the whey, which of course we will keep. And as is tradition, hey, actually 
that tastes pretty good. <laughs> it's nutty. It's a little bit sweet tasting. Maybe not in coffee. Maybe more of a savory application. But um, yeah. And this goes into the fridge to cool completely. In the meantime, remember these nuts? We've made tofu from raw peanuts already, but what about the more accessible roasted version? These were plain dried roasted peanuts, meaning they did not have any salt or oil added to them. I soaked them and went through the same process. The pulp is as fine as sand and crumbly, not too wet, which is good. As is tradition, I will taste. Tastes like roasted peanuts. A little dry, a little choky. So again, like its raw cousin, it feels like a dupe for coconut flour. I don't have time to experiment with it just yet though, so I'll save it for later. Unlike hemp hearts, peanuts have a lot of starch in them, so I do let the milk settle. And we get a little starch left over, just a tiny bit, but you could use it to thicken up your next peanut tofu stir-fry sauce, just an idea. Remember, we don't want the starch in the milk as it can interfere with the final tofu texture. You can check out the original fava bean tofu video to see the difference between leaving the starch in and keeping it out if you haven't seen that already. Before I get to heating this up, I'm just gonna mix up the coagulation agent. I don't expect cell coagulation in this case as raw peanut milk did not show any signs of that particular ability. Happily, I'm freshly stocked on gypsum, AKA calcium sulfate, which is the main traditional coagulant in Chinese tofu making. And it happens to be my favorite. Link in the description if you wanna get some too. Then, it's time to get this milk to prime coagulation temperature. My aim today is 180 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty much when the milk starts to simmer. Then I'll stir up the coagulant so the gypsum becomes suspended in the water again, and pour in while stirring. Check the temperature again, and now it's about 165 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty perfect. And I can cover and leave this alone for about 15 minutes to coagulate. Afterwards, as we might have expected from our experience with the raw peanut tofu, the curds are mighty fine. Not big and billowy like we generally prefer, but we can work with this. Tradition. What will it taste like? Barely peanutty water. I'll just scrape down the sides a little bit. The next day, it's time to see results. This is pretty dope. The taste is excellent. The texture is very similar to my favorite pumpkin seed tofu. It's firm with a slight bounce, chewy in a meaty kind of way without being rubbery, but because of the high fat content, it feels creamy as well, which I know kind of strange sounding, but you just have to try it to find out. I promise it's good. And the fact that it's this creamy color probably makes it more widely appealing. It pretty much just tastes like the hemp hearts it started from, just a bit more mild. I think this is my favorite tofu thus far. The only downside is the price. 
I bought the hemp hearts for $12.92 per pound, which was the lowest price I could find. Uh, that would be $9.46 in US dollars, by the way. I used half a pound and we got about 200 grams or just over seven ounces of finished firm hemp foo. So it's not cheap, but it's also not something you're going to eat a ton of. Since it's super high in fat as well as protein, expect this tofu to be incredibly filling. It wouldn't be quite fair to compare this to regular extra firm tofu. But life isn't fair. This is your standard block of extra firm tofu. It's 350 grams according to the package, although whenever I weigh them, I discover they're more like 400 grams, but I digress. On average, they're about $3.50 Canadian these days. In contrast, 350 grams of this hemp foo would require 389 grams of hemp hearts, making the cost $11 Canadian for an equivalent sized block. It's kind of bougie. You know what isn't bougie though? Dry roasted peanuts. Let's see what we have here. And it's not really like the raw peanut version at all. The similarity is in the flavor. Super mild, this time with a hint of roasted peanut flavor. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Very creamy, like it's meant to be the filling of a silk pie. What I love about this series is I never know what we're going to get, but for the most part, it's something new to play with and hopefully come up with something delicious. However, this being such a small amount, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with it. Let me know your ideas in the comments below. In the meantime, you have requested more beans to be included in the series and, well, you know, I love to give you what you want. Please like this video and subscribe if you haven't already, turn on notifications, and if you leave a request, don't forget to add the hashtag recipe request so I can see it more easily. Thank you so much for watching, my friends. Extra special thanks to my channel members. And bye for now.